The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Coming up on UMass Sports Insider, football has returned to Amherst and we'll recap all the festivities after a jam-packed weekend at McGurk Stadium late last month. And we're hitting the ice as the Minutemen hockey team starts its season, getting you all you need to know about the young squad that is looking to make a move in Hockey East. Plus, you'll see how a rowing alum is helping grow her sport, sharing it with school children in New York City. Paddling the ship straight downstream, UMass Sports Insider. Let's get it going. You're watching UMass Sports Insider, presented by Office Depot Office Max, Alden Credit Union, Mafre Commerce Insurance, Mohegan Sun, and Coca-Cola. UMass Hockey has begun its campaign, and for Coach John Micheletto, it's his third season behind the bench leading the program. Competing in the always daunting Hockey East Conference is annually quite the task, and UMass will try to navigate those waters with a load of new talent mixed in with some familiar veterans. Coming up, we'll introduce you to the names and faces you'll see on the Mullen Center ice this season. Hi there, I'm Josh Maurer. Thank you for joining us. Also coming up later on, we'll have a hockey player teach us how to take a one-timer. But we start with football, where late last month, Coach Whipple's team made its highly anticipated return to McGurk with a homecoming game sellout. They got to show off some new facilities to some alumni and fans in a weekend that featured a lot of pageantry and excitement. With a look, here's Mohegan Sun Instant Replay. It's a great day as we officially open the Football Performance Center here. This spectacular new facility is an absolute exciting milestone. The partnership with the, with the students, with the faculty, with everybody at UMass, I look at Jim, I look at Ditto, Marty, John, you know, Dan, you guys have been great. Capital projects and being able to be involved with things like this that really transform not only your programs but the campus. Uh, these are not easy things to do and we uh, totally appreciate the support that the university has provided to us and that our donors have provided to us to make these things possible. Tomorrow, the Minutemen take on Bowling Green in the big homecoming game. The stadium will be packed as Minuteman fans welcome our return to McGurk. Well, it's a special night for the university. I'm happy with my brother to do our part in bringing football back to McGurk. But more importantly, it's the excitement about playing Division I football. The fact that we have a sellout tomorrow, uh, this is a very special weekend. I have always contended that playing teams like Colorado or Vanderbilt to almost be, that's what the flagship state university, University of Massachusetts should be doing. By having facilities that will allow us to play in Amherst, allows the students, the alumni to come back, and friends of the university to partake. To sum it up, it's nice to be home. After all these years going to Gillette, it hasn't really felt like home yet, and now we're finally home again, and that's just going to feel awesome. I like seeing a lot of alumni. Um, uh, you know, it's a bunch of chill people, some good burgers being cooked up. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It feels awesome, honestly, like just to see all the old students come back and just seeing the love and bond that we all share that we've never lost, it's awesome. It feels like home, this is home. While UMass fell that day to Bowling Green in a shootout, quarterback Blake Furonapple threw for a school record 589 yards and five touchdowns. He's put up video game-like numbers at the beginning of MAC play. The team's next home game is back across the state at Gillette Stadium on Saturday, October 18th. 
Well, let's switch sports now. We move to the ice where the long UMass hockey season has just gotten underway. It's a young squad with a lot of talent, and they're trying to prove the pundits wrong and make some waves in Hockey East. With a look at the team, here's Joe Duty as Moffray Commerce Insurance presents In the Bunker with UMass Hockey. As the UMass hockey program embarks on year three under head coach John Micheletto, the team's success will rest largely on the ability of nine newcomers to adjust to Division I hockey. The Minutemen graduated nine players last year, six of whom have since signed professional contracts. Clearly it's about making sure that our freshmen get as uh, acclimated as quickly as possible. They knew coming in that there were big minutes to be had and, and obviously we were going to expect great things from them right away. I know uh, we've got guys currently on the team who are all winners and I think that's kind of the goal for us this year is to, to put ourselves in a, in a winning category. We've recruited kids that can play the, the way that we want to play. Uh, we recruited a lot of guys that were leading scorers on their team, category leaders in their league. Uh, guys that have won uh, championships in their league and in their country. Even with the roster turnover, the Minutemen plan to play the same up-tempo style they've employed in Micheletto's first two seasons. It's puck possession and it's quick strike transition that, that ultimately is, uh, you know, uh, statistically as you see the game being played is, is the way that teams win anymore. That up-tempo, trying to keep defenses back on their heels and un unsettled. Uh, and again, trying to outpossess the other team to get more quality shots is, is ultimately where we've been trying to go with our, with our philosophy and our system. The guys that are coming in, they're a little bit smaller forwards, uh, you know, bigger defensemen, um, and I think that helps with the pace of play that we want to play at. All the guys are, you know, they're really quick. Our forwards are going to be able to get in on their D, be really tenacious, run that, um, you know, 2-1-2 two, two forward check that we, you know, like to play. And, I think it's going to benefit us. He wants us jumping up in every rush that we can, um, obviously being smart when we, when we can, but we want to get the puck moving north as fast as we can. We want to kind of jump on teams when they make a mistake. The Minutemen will need to replace their top line from a year ago as the trio of Connor Sheary, Michael Pereira, and Brandon Graysell combined to score 33 goals. Steven Yacobellis, Ray Pagosi, and Troy Power are the team's leading returning scorers, and the offense figures to get a boost from Frank Vetrano, a redshirt sophomore from East Longmeadow who sat out last year. I think he's you know going to be a game changer for us. He's a, you know an X-Factor uh, kind of guy, and he's really going to, I think, explode this season. I'm excited to see what, what he does, and uh, you know he's obviously got a pretty special shot and, and I think he's going to find the net uh, you know, pretty frequently on the weekends. Between the pipes, senior Steve Masteler started 30 games last year for the Minutemen and was a three-time Hockey East Defensive Player of the Week. Clearly Steve uh, rode the bulk of the action last year and got some really valuable experience. Uh, so he's well situated going into a senior season uh, to, to make some waves in the league and, and, and try to backstop us. But I also know that uh, we've got a very talented freshman in Henry Dill and Alex Wakaluk looking to prove himself in his second season. Uh, and those guys are going to push for time and push for time right away. So it, it's going to be a very competitive situation that's going to be healthy for our team. On defense, Oleg Yavenko and Ben Gallagher are the Minutemen's two most experienced blue liners. Gallagher tallied 10 assists last year as a sophomore, and Yavenko was the only active college player to compete in the IIHF World Championships. I think we've got good leadership back there. We know that as a decor, we want to be hard to play against every single night. We're working on that in practice, uh, starting, starting with the preseason. Six Hockey East teams are ranked to enter the season led by preseason favorite Providence College. And with every team qualifying for the league playoffs, Micheletto's goal is to have his team hit its stride in the second half. We know that not everything is going to be 100% perfect, but uh, early in the season you're looking for effort and you're looking for you know, guys being mentally di dialed in and uh, trying to eliminate as many mental mistakes as possible in the early going. And really with the league star uh, starting to ramp up in the second half of the year, you're, you're ultimately trying to be uh, trying to work towards playing your best hockey at that time. For UMass Sports Insider, I'm Joe Duty. Thank you, Joe. UMass Hockey will have to hit the ground running. With five Hockey East games in the season's first month alone, precious points in the conference are on the line right out of the gates for Coach Micheletto's squad. Hey, it's time for us to take a quick break. We're going aside for just a few moments, but when we come back, one of the hockey team's best snipers shows you the art of taking a one-timer. Ready, aim, fire. Don't move a muscle. We've been receiving a lot of comments from our customers recently telling us how wonderful their experiences are and how Alden takes the time to listen to and understand their banking needs. It makes us feel good about what we do. Alden provides innovative banking products and great rates every day. So come into Alden today for a better tomorrow. Alden's here 
and we love to listen. Alden, banking, no boundaries. The gang always plays double zero just once. And sometimes, absolutely nothing becomes absolutely everything. Among life's millions of moments, some of the very best are made by Mohegan Sun. When it's your time to shine, come see us. Hotel UMass was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, Hotel UMass is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, Hotel UMass has it all. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to the program. Every week on our show, we take you into the classroom. Well, not literally. And one of the UMass athletes gives you a lesson into one of the finer points of his or her sport. Today, one of the UMass hockey players expected to be a big time goal scorer is gonna teach you how to let rip a one-timer. So let's send it over to Frank Vetrano for today's Peter Pan Between the Lines. Hi everyone, I'm Frank Vetrano. I'm a sophomore in the UMass hockey team. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to take a one-timer. When taking a one-timer, you got to be in hockey position, standing ready. Uh, some guys prefer different areas where they want their pass. With me, I like to have my pass in between my feet. I make sure I'm looking at the guy who I'm receiving the pass from, and I'm in hockey stance. The way you want your stick to be, uh, some people nowadays make mistakes with uh, bringing their stick too high up. With me, I like bringing my stick up this high. Now, nowadays with the technology and the sticks, the only thing you need to do is bring your stick up this high and you should be able to get a lot on it. When you take your one time, you want to make sure you have a heavy grip on the top. Make sure, I know people do it differently. With me, I like to hold the stick with kind of it hanging off the end of my pinky. And then your stick, this is probably the most important, is where you hold it on the bottom. If you want to get more grip and more strength on your shot, you want to keep it really grip tight down here and you kind of adjust your hand from here. If wherever the puck is, say if the puck's getting farther out, you want to choke down a little more. If it's in close, you want to choke up a little more. Now the first pass we're going to do here for one timer is going to be in the middle of my feet. Uh, this is where you work for a defenseman and also if you're on a power play. Uh, when you get in the middle of the feet, you can kind of adjust the stick on your own. You can either come up really high or you can either come up halfway. With this shot, I'm going to come up halfway. The next one-timer pass we're going to do is going to be off the front foot. Uh, now, with these, these are a little bit tougher to get off. You're, you kind of have to swing your whole body through. With me, I like to get on one knee and, and uh, really hammer it home. And that's how you take a one-timer. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you all at the Mullen Center. Good job. Thank you, Frank. Time for us to take a quick break. On the other side, we change things from the frozen ice to fresh water and get the story of a UMass rowing alum who's doing great things in New York City. Keep it right here. What's that great old saying about strangers? They're just friends you haven't met yet. Among life's millions of moments, some of the very best are made by Mohegan Sun. When it's your time to shine, come see us. A forward-thinking insurance company with a global network. Providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family. Mafre Commerce Insurance. 
the first name in insurance for more than one million customers. Focused on taking care of you and your family. Providing freedom from worry everywhere you go. Mafre Commerce Insurance. Book your wedding with award-winning UMass Catering. We can host, design, and plan your big event from full breakfast, lunches, to elegant wedding receptions and dinners. UMass Catering can host events in one of our ballrooms at Overlook Campus, tented outdoors, or our own Renaissance house. The possibilities are endless. Let the culinary team at UMass Catering bring creative menus and exceptional service to your wedding day. Special rates for members of the UMass family and alumni. Your UMass Minutemen return to Gillette Stadium October 18th to take on Mac Rivals Eastern Michigan. Be part of the experience, the fun, the excitement of a classic fall football day. And at halftime, see thousands of high school musicians join the UMass Minuteman Marching Band on the field for a huge performance. This is your state. This is your team. This is UMass football. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. Let's switch gears now. Under head coach Jim Dietz, the UMass rowing program has been one of the tops in New England for decades. Recently, one of their alums has been bringing the sport into one of the biggest cities in the world. With the story, here's Cody Cruchel as UMass Catering presents Serving the Community. It's 8 a.m. in Flushing, Queens. Two dozen high school girls trickle into a 75-year-old boathouse on Meadow Lake. This is Row New York, a community rowing program founded by UMass alum Amanda Krauss. Row New York is a nonprofit organization that I started a little over 10 years ago here in New York City. Um, and the goal was and still is to bring the sport of competitive rowing and academic support to kids in New York City who wouldn't otherwise have access to the sport. Krauss had never rowed before she took up the sport as a freshman at UMass in 1991. She was part of the UMass rowing program's transition from a club team to a varsity sport, and the idea for Row New York came to her shortly after she left Amherst. I went to graduate school at Harvard, and while I was there, I worked part-time at Community Rowing in Boston for a similar program called Girls Row Boston. And I was really inspired by the girls in that program and thought, you know, rowing has such um, potential to change young people's lives. That's when Kraus reached out to her coach at UMass, Jim Dietz. Well, it was something like, Jim, I really want to start this inner city rowing program. And, and, you know, it's all about diversity, but I've got water, but I don't have any boats and I don't have any oars. I asked him, you know, where do you think I should start this program and can you help? And he said, I'll tell you where to start it. And yes, I can help. I threw two fours on my pickup truck and eight oars and I drove them down there and, and just said, OK, you wanted to do this, good luck. <laughs> that was the start and, and everything was hard because we really didn't have any infrastructure or money or anything that we needed to get started. But what we did have was this vision for a program that, um, that slowly but surely evolved into what it is today. Last year alone, the program served 228 middle and high schoolers and nearly 2,000 more across a host of other programs, including summer camps, programs for people with disabilities, and indoor programs for incarcerated youths. I think when Row New York first started, you know, I was driving the kids, coaching the kids. I was fixing the boats not very well, raising the money, writing the grant proposals, building the board. What I do now is, you know, I work closely with the board of directors, um, to manage the growth and the stability of the organization and raise money. A big part of what I do is raising money. In addition to getting kids on the water, Row New York provides academic support. In New York City, less than 70% of students graduate from high school. 98% of Row New York graduates not only earn a high school diploma, but go on to college. The academic piece is just as important as the rowing piece here at Row New York. So we help with New York State Regents prep, we do the SAT prep in the summer, we do college guidance, we do college visits. Um, you know, it's really a wraparound. I think, you know, it's important to sort of get the full picture of Row New York, which is that we have a truly diverse group of kids. So we have kids from the Upper East Side and from affluent neighborhoods rowing with kids from, you know, communities that are truly underserved and 
we have kids who row for free and we have kids who pay to participate. And the idea is to make rowing accessible to um, kids in New York City who wouldn't otherwise have that access. We have kids consistently who come in who might be overweight, who within three months of Row New York have lost 30 or 40 pounds just because every afternoon they're rowing. We've seen kids who come in and maybe they're, you know, they're incredibly quiet, they're not engaged with other kids, and then across the year you see these incredible friendships formed. The big thing is seeing kids who come in not really believing in themselves and, and how much they're capable of and people will say you know it's incredible what you're giving these kids and and I always say you know we're not really giving them anything we're sort of just allowing them to see how much that they're capable of. For UMass Sports Insider I'm Cody Cruchel. Thank you Cody. The UMass rowing team is the defending Atlantic 10 champion and they're looking for another big year on the water. The fall portion of the schedule is already underway and for an extended look at what Amanda has been doing with Row New York, please visit our website umassathletics.com slash insider for a special web extra. Hey UMass fans, this is Steve Masters from the UMass hockey team. We're going to a commercial break right now, but when we get back you're going to learn where some of my teammates get their fashion sense from. plays double zero just once and sometimes absolutely nothing becomes absolutely everything among life's millions of moments some of the very best are made by Mohegan Sun when it's your time to shine come see us at this rate you can get that new car Low, low rates on auto loans. Alden Credit Union. Banking. No boundaries. At Alden Credit Union, our home loans leave room in your budget for some fun. You can get the kitchen you want, have space for a new friend, and still afford a night out with old friends. At this rate, you can have it all. 2.49% APR on all home loans. Hotel UMass was voted the best hotel in Amherst. Situated on the beautiful University of Massachusetts campus, Hotel UMass is where you stay to be in the heart of it all. With 116 contemporary guest rooms, free wireless internet, room service, 36 meeting rooms, free parking, and in walking distance to downtown Amherst, Hotel UMass has it all. Your UMass Minutemen return to Gillette Stadium October 18th to take on Mac Rivals Eastern Michigan. Be part of the experience, the fun, the excitement of a classic fall football day. And at halftime, see thousands of high school musicians join the UMass Minuteman Marching Band on the field for a huge performance. This is your state. This is your team. This is UMass football. You're watching UMass Sports Insider. Welcome back, I see you've waited patiently all show, so we're rewarding you with the Alden Credit Union lighter side. Let's check out some personalities of some minute men and minute women away from the field of play. Well, in today's day and age, what you wear in public says a lot about you, which got us to wondering what kind of influences do the UMass student athletes have when it comes to clothing? So we asked some of them, who's your biggest fashion influence? Let's check out the answers. I try to take my fashion sense from Chuck Bass from Gossip Girl. It's a, he's a, a dapper looking guy. Probably uh, Lauren and Ever. She's a professional surfer. I, I like her style. She's like relaxed and she always has swimsuits on. I like, <laughs> I like the ocean. So. You couldn't tell right now, but some of my teammates, they compare me to Kanye West. His style, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a trendsetter. Probably Kim Kardashian. Yeah, I like how she dressed. 
<laughs> I'm going to have to go with our two captains on our team, uh, Zach LaRue and Troy Power. Um, Zach really likes wearing tight shirts. I also wear, like wearing tight shirts. Uh, Troy wears really tight pants. I as well like to wear tight pants. I would say Mark Cuban, because if you know anything about him, he doesn't really care how he dresses, just to be comfy, you know, so. Chuck Bass. Okay, that's interesting. Tell, tell me about him a little bit. Um, he rocks the, pla the plaid, kind of the plaid suits every once in a while, and he, sh he throws in, you know, yellow or neon colors. Theoretically, if UMass were warm 12 months a year, you would just like walk around campus in bathing suits? I don't know about that, but yeah. I'd be at the ocean most of the time, and I'd just be in shorts the other half the time. What's your Kanye style? Uh, I'd probably wear some, some light colored jeans, some sort of hot white top with it, some big Tims, some nice Tims, you know? The Kardashian look. How do you pull that off? Just wear my heels out sometimes, you know, wear my hair down. I <laughs> just pull it off like that. Okay, what's the deal with all this tight clothing, though? Oh, uh, you know, I think it really just shows off their attributes as well as my own uh, chest and thighs, probably. So, you know, we work on those a lot. Mark Cuban wears like a plain t shirt, right? Yeah, I usually sweatpants too, like on Shark Tank. So he doesn't really care, neither do I. Yeah. So, so that's what I would go with. All right, so you're walking around campus in plaid? No, just for, I'll dress up like that for home games. So you'll be able to see that, yeah. Really? So yeah. you've had this planned out? Yeah, I have. I've been planning it for a while now. Do you surf? Um, I go to the beach a lot. I don't surf, but I board and stuff like that. Really? Yeah. Yeah? Are you good at it? Um, I like to think so. <laughs> Would you say you're one of the more fashionable guys on the team? Oh, definitely. I'm the most fashionable person on this team, hands down. Uh, although I won't dress like that to class. I wear sweats to class, but when I'm out, yeah. They've got Dash, right? You could shop at Dash. Yeah, I tried. I'm too tall. <laughs> too tall for them. Man, that must make it hard. Fashion's got to be hard for tall people, right? Yeah, it is. So how do you shop for the tight clothes? You just go to a store and just find a size that's like one or two too small for you? Yeah, I like to go to the Baby Gap a lot. Um, that's a good place. Let's say it's an October morning. What are you wearing on your way to class? No doubt, Boyden sweatpants and something that says UMass Athletics or UMass Soccer. Mark Cuban would approve of these sweatpants? Definitely, yeah. definitely. No doubt in my mind. Are you a Gossip Girl fan? Yes, it's, yeah, it's, it's an addicting show. <laughs> <laughs> you should bring that fashion to more people up here. We need that. With the snow. It's too yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah. Would you say the team in general is very fashionable, little fashionable, or not at all fashionable? When we choose to, we're very fashionable. Yeah? Yep. When we're making that walk through uh, north to class, We'll, we'll be wearing our UMass, our Paul Bias issue gear. So, but when we're stepping up, we'll, we'll be nice. We'll be dressed up nice. Maybe you should get a size that actually fits you. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna follow after our captains, just see how it plays out. Honestly. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. That's it for our program. The next new edition of UMass Sports Insider debuts on Saturday, October 25th, in which we'll give you a tour of this beautiful new football performance center that you see behind me. Until then, I'm Josh Mauer, and have a great rest of your weekend. UMass Sports Insider is presented by Office Depot Office Max, Alden Credit Union, Mafre Commerce Insurance, Mohegan Sun, and Coca-Cola.